How can we show people that mathematics is a creative, living, joyful subject, full of beautiful ideas, and overcome the misperception some people have that math is just boring arithmetic? One way is to involve people in the construction of a mathematical artwork, like this hands-on sculpture assembly. When a group of people get together to construct a large mathematical object, it makes clear how math is valuable not just for science and engineering, but also for art and design. This sort of event also helps correct a misconception some people have that in mathematics there's always a single right answer. This sculpture is not the solution to an equation or any sort of unique result or previously defined mathematical object. Instead, it's an artistic creation designed using mathematical ideas, but with the goal of being a beautiful structure with interesting internal relationships. And I would argue that that's a good metaphor for most of the work done daily by professional mathematicians. Math is very much an art. There's an aesthetic to what makes a beautiful theorem or an elegant proof. Math professors pass this culture on to their students who discover it requires active mental participation. Unless you're actively involved in doing mathematics, you can't fully appreciate its art. So with a sculpture assembly event like this, I try to get the public involved in the beauty of seeing patterns and understanding a larger structure in a way somewhat analogous to how an audience listens to a concert or watches a dance performance. But because mathematical thinking must be active, I keep the audience here busy building. They're constantly solving little puzzles by discovering patterns and extending them to position the next pieces. I hope they're also seeing some of the beauty which I enjoy in the structure. Doing abstract mathematics is similar, but the pieces are ideas instead of colored metal components. By the time these orbs are completed, the participants have a physical and tactile understanding of the structure, even if they couldn't explain it in mathematical terminology. Like any art, geometric sculpture can serve to elevate us and get the viewer thinking on a higher plane. The mathematical foundations embedded in this kind of artwork can make connections to geometry, topology, calculus, graph theory, combinatorics, depending on the background of the viewer. Or it can simply serve to give people a new attitude about mathematics, to see that math can be cool and inspire them to learn more. To a geometer, the basic ideas can be understood by starting with an icosidodecahedron, which consists of 20 triangles and 12 pentagons. It's an Archimedean polyhedron, which means every vertex has the same local arrangement of faces. You can see pentagon, triangle, pentagon, triangle around each of the 30 vertices. The sculpture is made of 30 flat pieces, one corresponding to each vertex of the icosidodecahedron. 30 planes are positioned tangentially at these vertices. I can put shapes of any sort in the planes, but if each is shaped like a rhombus of the proper size, we get the rhombic tricontahedron, which a mathematician would say is dual to the icosidodecahedron. Instead, we could shape the 30 planes as long bars that extend past their neighboring faces and meet the neighbors one hop further away. If you follow them around the world, you'll see these bars combine to form six separate large red pentagons. Shrinking the original faces of the icosidodecahedron makes it easier to see that these large red pentagons are disconnected from each other, so the whole thing wouldn't hold together as a single sculpture. To connect them, we can combine the long bar shape with another short bar in another direction but in the same planes. This is the basic idea of the design. With the two crossed bars, you can see it's now one connected component that can be built from 30 flat pieces. The pattern of three-sided and five-sided openings around each part corresponds exactly to the pattern of faces of the underlying icosidodecahedron. From the geometry of the polyhedron, we can work out the necessary lengths and angles so the components meet precisely at the lines in space where these planes intersect. The sculpture design starts from this exact geometry, but the bars take a curved path in their planes to get to the same endpoints in space. Using curves allows me to create a flowing organic design, which I can explore with paper models. Since this is paper, I can use slots as the connectors to quickly join the parts. Making a paper model also gives me a good sense of the construction issues. In what sequence should the parts be assembled? How should the parts connect to each other? Are there any likely errors, like flipping a part over, that I should warn people about at the construction? One structure to see is the pentagon equator. A second structure to notice 
are how these low isosceles triangles serve to lock the angles between the planes. And be sure to find the 5353 pattern of the four openings around each piece. When I'm working on a design, I like to play with it and explore different possibilities within the mathematical constraints. So I made this wood model to experiment with various openings in the parts. It also gives a sense of how rigid the final result will be. This is made of 1 8 inch thin wood, but it's solid as a rock due to all the triangulation. If you look in the interior, the many holes make a beautiful pattern, but from the outside, where the viewers generally are, I think these small holes are too disrupting. So based on this model, I think it's best to keep just the central hole in each flat piece. The four orbs of the sculpture show a development of this idea. In the first orb, which is the smallest and lowest along the stairway, the bars are only slightly curved, and there's no central hole in each piece. Then as we ascend, the orbs become curvier and larger, going from four to five to six to seven feet in diameter. I introduce the central opening in the parts in the second orb, and it enlarges as we ascend. As both a mathematician and sculptor, I feel this sort of sculpture barn raising event is a pretty good way to communicate something important about the beauty of mathematics. We're in a 75 foot tall atrium in the engineering building at Duke University in North Carolina. I call the sculpture Geometry Ascending a Staircase, and I love how you can study it from above, below, and all around as you walk through the space. And the dimension of time also adds perspective. Your experience of the sculpture is enriched if you have an understanding of how it took many participants to bring it into being. So, if you're in the vicinity, check out Geometry Ascending a Staircase with this history in mind, and I hope you'll enjoy this celebration of the joy of geometry and the beauty of mathematics.